everyone hello there welcome back to sustainable living with shilpa reddy powered by planet greens farm natura a new beginning to your life today on yet another episode of kankatala q and a with shilpa i will be addressing a few questions that we have received in the past few weeks following the tradition today i am wearing a gadwal sari named after the region wherein they are woven the gadwal sari dates back to around 200 years a pure version of gadwal sari is where the entire sari is made of cotton while the borders are designed in pure mulberry silk or tussar the magnificent and diverse weave with zari brocade on the border makes gadwal sari one of the kinds and popular kankatala family has been working with gadwal sari weavers for over 70 years to bring out elegant and exquisite gadwal sarees the gadwal sarees are woven using a three shuttle weaving technique of kuppadam and kumbam for the borders the sarees are also woven using unique technique wherein the pallu and the border of the saree are joined to the primary saree after being woven separately the unique technique is similar to that of korwai of kanchipuram sarees This luxurious classy cream gadwal cotton sari is one of its kind and is woven in a plain cream body gorgeously with a ganga jamuna silk border in red and black and extended the charm onto the red pallu for the drape executes rich royal and sophisticated look There is honey and there is honey Bee keepers honey is more likely to be unheated or raw so look at the jar label for description like raw unpasteurized and minimally filtered to be sure you're choosing honey with the health benefits like tiny grains of pollen and propolis included most of the honey in the supermarket is heated and filtered repeatedly to promote and prolong its shelf life so many of the natural properties are lost in this process Secondly, a lot of honey in the shops is blended and not of single origin. Some local beekeepers mix all their honey together in a huge tank before opening the tap and filling in their jars. There are two things to work out from the label if you can. Time of the year and where the honey comes from. So information like early summer honey or barrage honey or the address of the beekeepers are reasonably good indicators that the honey comes from the hives in that particular place lastly you just need to look at the honey through the glass jar it should be clear and not cloudy and it should move like thick syrup usually light colored honey is mild and floral wills dark honey has a more pronounced flavor try one of each and find out which one do you prefer Turmeric is an indispensable spice in the Indian kitchen. These days there is a lot of adulteration of turmeric as well. Food color is being added to white flour with little composition of actual turmeric to make the whole composition look like turmeric and smell like it. One of the easiest way to check adulteration is to add a teaspoon of turmeric to a glass of warm water. Do not stir it and leave it still for a while. Check after about 20 minutes. If the powder settles down at the bottom of the glass with clear water above the turmeric is pure when it comes to turmeric powder there are two grades available madras turmeric which is a turmeric commonly available in supermarkets and alappi turmeric it is not only used as flavoring agent but also revered as a ayurvedic medicine to boost your immunity heal wounds and act as a natural anti-inflammatory Adulterated turmeric may include chemicals like methanol, yellow color and lead chromate which are most commonly used. They may be toxic and can have a negative impact on your health especially if they're being consumed regularly hidden in your turmeric powder. Peppers, corn, apples, cucumbers, carrots are few of the vegetables 
that absorb greater portions of pesticides when they are supplied to the soil. According to some experts, including natural farmers, even some of the organic producers in India have close to 30% toxic residues from the pesticides used on them during farming. Some toxins give in easily to a homemade mix of white vinegar and water. Make a solution of 10% vinegar and 90% water and soak your fruits and vegetables in it for about 20 minutes. Then rinse the produce in fresh water. Your fruits and vegetables are ready to be consumed. Few vegetables like bottle guard, beets, radish, onions, peas are few among very selective vegetables that do not absorb too much pesticides. It is important to pick the vegetables and greens very carefully from the supermarkets or vegetable stores especially when the crop looks too inorganically beautiful. The rugged and rustic look to the vegetables actually mean that the vegetables are less prone to have pesticide residues. It is not about the price of the sustainable products. Any product, when consumed in less quantities, has a higher selling price because of the production cost being very high for the manufacturer or the producer. When the consumption of these consumables increase, relatively the price of the production can be reduced by the manufacturer. After reduction of production cost, every business owner or a producer would like to give the benefit of selling price reduction to the consumer as well. This could also be an attempt to gain more consumer base. Also on the other hand, the certification and legal procedures for the sustainable or organic produce add some little cost to the product procurement cost for the producer. But largely, it is misunderstood that the sustainable products in general are expensive. Organic certification is a certification process for producers of organic food and other organic agricultural products. In general, any business directly involved in the food production can be certified, including seed suppliers, farmers, food processors, retailers and restaurants. A lesser known counterpart is certification for organic textiles or organic clothing that includes certification of textile products made from organically grown fibres. Organic certification is intended to ensure customers that a product marketed as organic was in fact produced according to the organic production standards, which can vary by country. Farmers must also compile a list of each substance to be used as a production input as per the National Organic Programme in 2001. It is not quite easy to acquire an organic certification from the respective national governments. Such kind of audit process is what ensures the consumers of the product quality. Every home can conserve water in a small or large way. By taking small measures that may include turning off running tap water while brushing teeth or having a mug of water for cleaning purposes. Using water blocking nozzles for your showers and taps is one of the best methods to limit the quick flow of running water. On the other hand, it is important to reuse the water for a different purpose instead of draining the water each time into the sink. For example, using the water from vegetable rinsing for bathroom flushes, taking shorter quicker showers or bucket parts will also help you conserve water in the long run. Fixing the leaking taps is another very important practice to conserve water in a very big way. Some of them put pebbles or rocks in the flush tanks to reduce water refilling capacity of the flush tanks. There is a new technology for flush tanks where hand wash will be redirected to the flush water and this is one of the most sustainable water conservation practices. Sustainable food production is one of the major challenges of the 21st century in the era of global environmental problems such as climate change, increase in population, natural resource degradation, 
including soil degradation and biodiversity loss. Climate change is among the greatest threats to the agricultural systems. Green revolution, though multiplied agricultural production by several folds, but at the huge environmental cost, including climate change. It jeopardized the ecological integrity of agro-ecosystems by intensive use of fossil fuels, natural resources, agrochemicals and machinery. Moreover, it threatened the age-old traditional agricultural practices. Agriculture is one of the largest sectors that sustain livelihood to maximum number of people and contribute to the climate change. Therefore, a climate smart approach to sustainable food production is the need of the hour. Traditional agriculture is getting increased attention worldwide in context of sustainable food production in changing climate. The present article advocates traditional agriculture as a climate smart approach for the sustainable food production and also deliberates the correlation between climate change and agriculture. Crop rotation helps control the erosion of soil from water and wind by improving the soil structure and reducing the amount of soil that is exposed to water and wind. Crop rotation also supports reduced or no-till farming which ensures even better protection against erosion. Long before we had synthetic fertilizers to maintain the land's nutrients, the chemical pesticides and herbicides to keep pests and weeds under control, we had crop rotation. A well-designed crop rotation makes land both more productive and more environmentally sustainable. It improves the financial viability of a farm by increasing productivity whilst reducing chemical input costs. Nitrogen fixing legumes such as soya bean and alpha alpha in crop rotation fix atmospheric nitrogen into the soil through root nodules. This nitrogen is then available for subsequent crops. Deep rooted cover crops can draw up nutrients such as potassium and phosphorus from deep in the soil profile, making these nutrients available for subsequent shallow root crash crops. Growing a hay crop in a rotation can result in improved tilth and bulk density. When a hay crop is ploughed in, the soil will be loose and have good granule structure and tilth. These improved properties results from the soil being protected from raindrops, the network of fine roots in the soil and formation of humus from decomposing plant roots. All the factors that are important to the entrepreneur in a standard business are critical to the successful sustainable business. Sustainability entrepreneurship builds on the basis of entrepreneurship and extends it to encompass addressing ecological and social concerns through the creation of new enterprise and innovation in existing enterprises. A key for successful sustainability entrepreneurs is to make sure that the new way of doing things they create provide value to their potential customers. By always thinking about doing things in the new and better ways, entrepreneurship is highly relevant to individuals and organizations interested in sustainability. Entrepreneurship in sustainable space is less explored. Having to start a venture in this space is more like being a pioneer for the business venture. The pioneer will always have monopolistic advantages. This is the time when most of the Indian citizens are accepting and understanding the need to consume sustainable products. Hope you all found this episode informative. Please do subscribe to my channel. Do not miss any updates. See you all next week. Signing off, Shilpa Reddy.